Welcome back everyone. In today's lesson, we're going to continue off where we left off in the previous video. Previous video, we did a lot of refactoring of how shaders and resources work. So in the previous lesson, we ended up with, you know, simpler code and a cube. Now today, we're going to move on to uh, dealing with uh, textures, uh, grayscale textures. With these type of textures, there's a lot of things we can do. Um, and they have various names on what the function is. Um, you might have heard of height maps, which is a black and white image that allows you to determine how tall certain parts of a terrain is. Um, today we're going to deal with uh, mask textures. Uh, mask textures is basically a stencil or a brush. And we're just going to use that to help us paint uh, our own custom texture when we you know, apply the settings just right. So on screen we have uh, two grayscale images that um, we're going to use for this lesson that I found online. They're very low resolution, so they'll be a little pixelated when we're rendering in WebGL. But we're going to have we're going to have two masks. We're going to have a square and this weird shape that looks kind of cool that puts like circles in the corners. So now if we move on to our source code, um, you'll see we're going to start off by loading in our uh, two mask textures. On line 41, you know, we're just giving it a name and uh, the actual file name and that will load in our textures. Now if you move on to the, near the bottom on line 55 we're going to pass in some colors into our shader because we're going to um, use the masks as, as a brush. So if these are our brushes what are the colors we're painting? So th that's what we're doing here. So on line 55 we're setting up our uniforms, we're passing in new colors, new colors is an array, we're going to just pass in two sets of colors. Um, then line 56, we prepare our textures. We give it a, we use the shader name, then the name that we have sh saved in our cache when we loaded it up. You know, we're loading both in one go. And then um, on line 58, we initialize U, uh, U colors. And I'm putting in like a, a red and then kind of like a white-ish color. So moving on, now we're now back in, now we're gonna go into our fragment shader. So in here, um, what we're going to do is in line 105, we're going to put in both our masks, mask A and mask B, and then our uh, color array. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to pass in two colors. And then we're going to, in our main, we're going to grab the pixel of that mask. And then we're just going to apply that using a mix between um, R. So line, line 113, at the end, I say mask a dot r. That's the red channel of the pixel. But you gotta remember the 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 um, the colors are grayscale. That means R G B are all the exact same numbers. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. They're they're the exact same numbers. They're gonna be a number between zero and one. And if you remember that in in so many of our shader lessons that or you know just WebGL, everything kind of exists between negative 1 and 1 or 0 and 1. So that's what masks are good for because they're between black and white and the colors for black is all zeros and the color for white is all ones. So that gives us a, a nice um, way to create percentages. So in line 113 we're taking um, two colors and we're going to use our mask channel as a percentage between the two colors. So you know, if, if it's all black, I want uh, the color, the first color. If it's all white, I want the second color. And if it's any, if if uh, anywhere in the mask is in be anywhere be in between black and white, some kind of gray color, I, that's what I want. I want a blend of those two colors, so some kind of fading between color A and color B. So if we go into our browser, you'll see what we have. We have our red cube and all the white lines in our square uh, mask is, you know, that white, whitish color. And there you go, that's, we just stenciled, we just painted with a brush all f six faces of the cube. Now we're gonna go back to our code and we're going to apply the second mask. So on line one, one three, we're adding, uh, we're getting the pixel for the second mask. And then line 114, we're going to add the two red channels together and we're getting the minimum of one. 
uh, where the minimum number is. Um, so let's say if both channels are one, they add up together to two. But you know, colors the color can't go past one. So that's where we're using the min function. So give me give me anything that's smaller. So if it's smaller than one, that's the number we use. Else we use one. That's because it's the maximum color we can use. And by doing that, we're blending the two colors. So if uh, for some reason the one the first mask is a black and the second mask is white, then that pixel becomes white. If um, the two masks are some type of gray color, they can then be added up together and they can um, become white or become a brighter gray. Um, so that's what we're kind of doing. We're kind of just merging the two masks together. We're blending them together right away. And then um, on line week 16, uh, one, yeah, uh, 116, we're taking away mask A, that R channel, and just putting in our C value because that's our color percentage value now. So now if we go into our browser, you'll see that the second mask has been applied to our cube. Now we see the circles in the corners. And that's, that's how quick and easy we can just blend um, several masks together and then use a color to color it. So go back to our code. We're now going to scale our textures. So in line 112 and 113, we're scaling it. I'm making uh, the square uh, four times smaller and uh, making the, the corner circles two times smaller. So the things tile uh, a little bit better. So if we go back to our browser, after we do some scaling, now this is what it looks like. Now our giant square now becomes a grid. Now we start applying, you know, now we're creating a grid texture. And then uh, every, you know, for every square cube, we have a circle. So that's kind of neat. So now we're, now we're playing around with how textures look. Now if we go back one more time, and line 112, I'm now changing the 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 the, the square one, the the cube, the, the the grid that we made. Now I'm taking the color of that, and I'm doing giving me just fifteen percent of it. I want eighty five percent of it to go dark. So basically, I'm kind of changing its alpha, or I'm just changing how bright that color is. So if for some reason it's white. I want f only 15% of that white color. So it's actually a color very close to black. So that's what I'm doing with mask A. I'm just dimming it. So if we go back to our browser, there you go. You see that our grid now has been lightened up or you know been shaded away. And now you get to see more of the second mask, which kind of blends in. And that kind of creates a nice texture. This might look really good on like a like a bunch of walls or a nice terrain or whatever. But, they, they, you know, hopefully got the, the idea that, that a, ma a texture mask is really just a paintbrush. So you can just apply, you just, think, just think about using it as a paintbrush in Photoshop. You know, you're choosing a color, you're choosing the, the opacity, um, you change the size of the tile so this way you, the, it paints it bigger or paints it smaller. Um, so that's all the texture masks are really are, just brushes. Just, just if you think about them as brushes, they're very easy to work with, especially if you're an artist and you're kind of used to, you know, doing with Photoshop and, and you know, painting and drawing and things like that. It makes it easier. But um, just be your programmer. So you're painting with numbers. So, um, and that, that's, that's it. That's all we have for today. It's very simple. Uh, I wanted a nice, quick, small lesson. And, um, and this hopefully it's some some fun. So go online, find a bunch of masks, like just little bits of masks, or actually create your own uh, with Photoshop or or GIMP. And like I said, it's all a black and white image. Just draw something. Just draw a bunch of weird, you know, shapes and whatever, and then blend them together and see how well you can you can add more masks. You go find other masks, and you know, and uh, you can blend four or five or six different masks together and create a very unique texture. Um, that's that's programmable and customizable, and you can animate it. You know, you can um, add um, attributes to it. Like, uh, let's say you you add in the time, like we've done in previous lessons, and use time to animate the grid. So this way, the the grid color um, can fade back and forth. Um, so this it becomes light and dark in in a certain rate. So you can actually animate these texture blends as well. You can do here, you know, like I said, you can do a lot. Um, you know, I like I said, I'm just giving you ideas to experiment while between here and you know other lessons. 
So hope you had fun. Hope you learned a lot. Hope you have an option or opportunity to kind of really mess around with this because there's a lot, like I said, you can do with these things. And um, so yeah, hope you know, like, subscribe, the usual BS that I usually keep forgetting to mention at the end of the video. And um, see you guys at the next lesson.